they do, uh, in fact, choose map. I'm going to pick Battle for the Eternity, though, interestingly enough. Well, something else? Keeping it simple. Yep. From Ballistics, and maybe this will be the one where we see another Hanzo, maybe if that's all banned. And our last game, also just to mention again, it was the, the first game from Korea without Hanzo from the draft at all. So his 100% participation rate is going down to 99.9%, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but this one, uh, you cannot... Even if you have a Grey main or Genji, I think you need that Hanzo if, if he's open. So basically, it will be the fight to grab onto that Hanzo. And Problem secondly, is when, they, when, mm -hmm. they, when you take Grey main in that last draft first, you give Genji Uther, which is like the strongest Genji of all time. I know a lot of Korean teams don't think so, because they're like, well, I can just first pick Genji and then they'll pick Uther against me, but I'm fine because Genji's broken. No, Genji Uther is broken, and that is the problem, and that's a fact, right, is that that win rate for that combo is off the charts, and you give it to a, an incredible player on the side of Ballistics, give him a Divine Shield, and you're going to be sorry about it. Now, they ban the Tracer this time, but this could lead to a very similar situation the last time. Ballistics can now decide to ban the Hanzo, for example, to leave the Grey main open if they're not interested in playing it. You could literally do the same thing they did last game with the Genji. Not as good of a Genji battleground. So they're looking to ban the Grey main. And now, I think Miracle needs to, they need to take the Hanzo. You give Genji Uther, which is unfortunate. You can take Uther here. But I don't think that Miracle is going to think about the game in that way. That's not normally how they think. They don't think about the game in terms of hero pairings and combos. They think about comfort picks. Like, I would not even be slightly surprised if they did something crazy like locked in first pick Garrosh here. <laughs> it would not be meta, and it would be a little bit absurd, but they could theoretically do it um, and kind of respond afterwards. Very it's possible. I, I don't like banning a... If you have first pick, I don't like banning a non super high priority hero like Tracer because you always lend yourself into getting trapped by the Uther Genji if you go the other way. And if you, you can't take either Uther or Genji and make it look smart. I think if they had a plan of grabbing Hanzo, I think that's the reason why maybe they were banning Tracer. Uh, I think uh, just as a throw ba throwaway ban, but instead they're going to grab onto Genji. But what happens now? I have a feeling we might see the Uther locked in with the Hanzo. You know, I mean, I joked about how fast they were going to lock it in last time. It almost looks like Moggy's, like, typing some BM in the chat after this one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, and how did I know? I do not and then know. Genji's, what, like, 1 and 11 or 1 and 12 against Uther in Korea? I don't know. It's a pretty small win rate. They took the entire drafting time to decide to pick Genji, knowing that they banned the Tracer, which is going to lead to either this reality or a reality where they pick Hanzo, and Uther gets the Genji pairing just like last game, which is why the Tracer ban, to me, doesn't make sense. It feels like they were thinking Ballistics wasn't going to make the smartest move with the Grey main ban, and then they were like, oh god, we messed up. They spent the entire pick time to lock in the Genji, and Ballistics spent 10 seconds to smile and lock in the immediate answer that we've seen so many times. And now what does Miracle draft? There are no answers. There are no correct choices here. There is only drafting on the fly and hoping for really a, a, a thought or some sort of new nuanced strategy. I think this one they will be just going back to their normal, like the Leeming, Leeming Genzi along with possibly Garrosh with Tyrio maybe next to it. So they're gonna go around here and bring that Nubarak to get that Uther in Cocoon and lock him in there and provide that silence right after for Genji to pick up multiple kills. That's what you're looking for. And as a miracle, they usually put on another mage along with Genji, not just a Genji. Oftentimes, sometimes Jaina. Oftentimes on this map, Li Ming, where Gunja, yeah. Gunja's skill shots are pretty good. I think this one, they will be I, going back to their normal one. I think you can just ban Li Ming here. And then you're going to be pretty happy about whatever happens next. And Li Ming and bring, bring ETC, which yeah. is a perfect pair with Uther also. Yeah. Like, I think you're right on the money. Li Ming is definitely their go-to in this situation. Although, again, remember, it's flex that we're seeing. 
Jaina is a, a more common pick in terms of meta picks in Korea, and is again Gunza's highest win rate hero uh, at uh, fifty percent, <laughs> <laughs> two and two, but uh, will be banned away. Yeah, even Jaina's fine. I think they realize that they're not going to switch uh, any more heroes in game three, as we have a lot more standard picks from Genji and Nubarak. Still might be just Gunza playing that on Ubarak. We don't know yet. I I think we have to look at the solo lane and if yeah. they end up picking a mage, I think they will be going to that old role. Maybe they want to stick with what they have tonight. I just feel like this comp has been... People have tried to break the, ru the, the rules of the Shimada bands with bands like the Tracer or the Abathur in the past. And I think we've kind of figured out that it just simply doesn't work because they Hanzo Uther you and then you're stuck with this useless Genji, and you... It, I feel like this Genji is going to do very little. We've seen players like Relic almost pull it off, where I'm like, damn, that was close. Like, you almost did this without, like... You did it with a Rhaegar, and you still almost won every team fight, <laughs> but we're not there yet, right? Like, people just aren't that good at Genji yet. He needs that support, and it limits what he can do. The mouth Mouthdale Bound was the first one I was thinking, because Ballistics can just super control the top lane with that, but... And obviously, it, it works really well for the Immortal race, but... I think the better ban would have been the ETC ban, and I think that is what uh, is likely to be locked in here for Ballistics, because he just, again, shuts down the mobility of the Genji. Um, it, you are likely going to be picking it into a Li Ming, so you do have to think about that, because Wave of Force is going to ruin your day a little bit. If you're thinking about ETC, of course, and the Game 1 ETC was pretty scary from Hooligan from Ballistics, so that's going to be in their head as... Last time when they did, they brought this is the map they brought Chen to block all the damage from leaming onto yeah. the other side. But that could be the last pick after watching all the picks for a miracle. If they actually want to bring in the mage, then bring in Chen instead of ETC. Chen is very strong against uh, leaming, but I think you save that for fifth pick if you're mm -hmm. gonna do that. And obviously he'll be the solo laner. Let's see. They're gonna steal the leaming. It'll be Tyrael locked in as well. So now, the question becomes even tougher. And I think this might be a Junkrat pick. We're talking about hero pools here, which has always been the strength, or sorry, the weakness, I should say, of Miracle. We talked about it since day one in 2018 here. And Goons is an incredible Leeming player. He's an incredible Junkrat player. But but we saw this pattern a lot. Uh, sorry to cut you off there, but uh, when Anubarag was winning so much, it was because Uther was rising up so much and Regar. Only one supports, and back then Tyrael was not. Tyrael did not have those changes. But when you cocoon that one safety tool, basically they had none. But with Tyrael rising up so highly, now they have two. Who do you cocoon, Uther or Tyrael? Either one, you can do it. But there will be the other one to protect yeah. the one who's in danger only, all the time. You can only cocoon time. one. You're limited. Yes. And if they lock in the junk rat here, like, let's just wait. Okay. I think this is going to be a junk rat. We don't know what the soul lane is going to be. Dahaka is still available. It's been the one their go-to, so it might be Junkrat Dahaka here. Let's see what they lock in before I comment. Okay, Abbott or Chen, so they're doing the thing that Ballistics kind of tried to run with the Chen. Look at this composition and tell me what it's supposed to do. I think the answer is solve the problem that was created by the first pick, Genji, with the Uther Hanzo ban. The rest of those four picks, the Anubrak, Stukov, the Abathur, Chen, are supposed to correct the mistake that was made in the first pick, Genji. Sure, Abathur can empower Chen. He can Abathur, he can empower Genji and Anubrak. Look for picks. They've got Stukov, so they have a silence. They can make some early game picks happen. Chen is going to be very strong in the soul lane against Tyrael. But again, we talked about the ammo changes that make Chen a little bit less useful there. But in team fights and in the immortal race, tell me one way that comp wins. It never will. It <laughs> never, ever, ever will unless they get picks and kills. Mecha Anubarak, uh, not Anubarak, Avatar slaps onto the immortal. That's. Even. Uh, I, I think Avatar really has to come for that extra damage if they want to win the race. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's going to help at all, but. Monstrosity is getting they involved. They are not. <laughs> City and two lane maps, of course, <laughs> of course. But this way, I think they're looking for the defense. Long time, long overtime period period of time damage because ballistics. They will. They're trying to save 
the burst damage. They have the CC, they have the Divine Shield, but it's not really effective against what Miracle has right now. Of course, it can save you from resets coming out from Genji. But with that ETC pick, which is super effective and against Chen, even better. And I think Hooligan was laughing, smiling at the end, just picking ETC says, Oh, this is my chance to destroy Chen now. Like, the Malthel ban makes more sense now too, when you think about it, because Malthel would have been great in this situation against the Chen and the Abathur, etc. Mm -hmm. um, it is going to be Judy on Genji, so I guess this is a position swap. So that, to go full circle on this, if they've just simply decided he's the DPS player now and Goons is the tank, then that probably means they think tank is more high skill cap than DPS right now, which I don't know if I agree with. But they also have just decided it's a roll swap, so... You know, if they're going to go all in with it, I guess I don't mind it as much. Let's see, this is their day one with the swap. And... But Chen Avatar in the top lane is going to destroy Tyrael, even though you can kind of soak. Yeah, I you mean... You do not have the best wave clear. That's going to be painful if you stay in that lane. He has the uh, Locust as well, so I mean, even that's it's not huge, but it is significant <laughs> in terms of what he can do. John is just going to have to time his shields correctly. Great symbiote here to save Judy. In fact, with the Silence, they nearly made that a counter kill. The early game is being dominated down here in the 4v3 lane. Uh, and that's a problem because Abathur can help you get early game picks sometimes. Otherwise, he's very weak in the early game. We know that about Abathur. It's just one of the standard things we accept to be true about Abathur pre-10. But uh, well, it's going to be rotation tough. down. Like, we really need to make this into a kill. There's silence. a of silence. Nicely done, Mark. There you go. Down. That's what you got to do. So far, so good for Miracle. I actually think the execution has been pretty good. Nice engaged by Gunza there. As Ballistics, they are, they have to win the, they will be winning the wave clear all the time. And that's exactly when you go for the kill, trying to have that delayed as much as possible. Because Miracle, when you look, when you look at Miracle, uh, oh. Not sure what happened here, but uh, I heard a gleaming reset sounds and I was a dead Genji before our eyes. Yeah, go on, continue. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying. <laughs> they don't have, they don't have any wave clear. Genji wave clear? No. no. Alubra wave All. clear? A little bit. Stukov silence wave clear? That takes a long time. Uh, Avatar? Uh, of, co of course not. And Chen, I think they have the wave, 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 wave clear, but not going to be in the same lane. And, and on the other side, all they need is a single shot from Hanzo, the scatter arrow. So Come that's on. much as for three men from Miracle for Uther. wave clear, in terms of wave clear there. What if Uther got burning rage so that would solve all their problems? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, not, gonna, not gonna happen. Um, it's not even on the right team, I don't even know what I'm saying. All right, Hooligan. Get stunned here, we'll escape. He doesn't even I was like trying to look for wave clear, then I was looking <laughs> at all the heroes, and I'm like, well, yeah, Uther. Wait, no, that's. Uther at four. Too late. They, I mean, they don't have the greatest wave clear. It is going to be Konzo going with the uh, scatter arrow build. Okay, so they need to dive, basically. This comp used to be, this type of comp used to be called dive. We don't really call it that anymore. We don't really talk about it that much anymore uh, in Korea. Obviously, outside of Korea, we see like NA's carrying comp, stuff like that, but. They basically need to get picks and get kills in here. That's what they're trying to do. They're using the comp correctly. They've got the Abathur symbiote with, to come and add the extra damage. They have these nests to stop rotations, but they're losing the longer fight. And so now, because they didn't get any picks, they're in trouble. As soon as this fight's over, Ballistics is going to go try to race. They did retreat pretty well, actually. Ballistics hasn't gotten any picks yet. Jaehyun's very low. Looks like he will be the first to fall finally here. And now, Ballistics should proudly march to the Red Immortal to obtain their prize. They have Li Ming and Hanzo, so just poking this down is super easy. Okay, Guns is looking for a, a playmaking potential here. Misses, unfortunately, another slide, but SC, will he get out? Gets the shield from Tyrael, but I don't think he lives through this. Judy gets that dash reset. Gonna be a trade, it looks like. H82 coming in here. Bit of a crazy game with this Chen. Hooligan getting all that armor from Uther. And HA2 is going to have to back off. They win halftime. And HA2, I think he lives through this. Yeah, <laughs> Sukov's healing is pretty good once it uh, once he kicks that uh, bio kill switch. This kind of looks like my quick match games for a second. Yeah. <laughs> for the last minute. Well, uh, I mean, at least like Miracle got a healer. Like. <laughs> 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 
the comp is like not a horrible composition and that in fact in different years and in different metas this comp would be considered to be quite meta and quite strong like mvp black used to run comps like this so did denial esports back in uh you know 2016. this is a comp that we would see do well against other types of comps obviously stukov and, and genji weren't released at that time but you know we'd see size so Zarya with this always the avatar sometimes an illidan it would be an illidan you know chen comp but it doesn't work in today's meta as well, as you guys can see. Ballistics is going to win this first Immortal. And this is a comp that Miracle's running that will come online post-10. It's going to be a while before they get there now that they've lost this first Immortal. It's going to take some time, man. He goes really good and dives in for a second. I think that peel so that Immortal can do max. A lot of damage. They are trying to take this fort down at least. I think they should easily be able to get the fort. It's already basically dead before the Immortal is going to go down. Avatar's body soaking bot while still at providing some symbiotes here. I mean, a little bit, as as much as he can, to mitigate this damage. But this is even get a swing on the keep wall. Avatar goes back to the fort as Ballistics rotates down to clear that wave. Ballistics about four waves away from level ten. Plus, obviously, the tick of experience here. And you know, Miracle just kind of has to. I, I think they have to try to fight for this neutral camp. Their comp is so good at that. This is really similar, actually, to the Zarya comp we saw in Dragonshire in terms of camp control pre-10. Like, they're very good at it, but they hesitate. And they get nothing for it. Ballistics would be very happy with this. Yeah, the rotation from JL was a little bit slow. He was clearing up the top lane after that team fight. Because they need that big silence. That's their tool. Yeah. Look at how horrible Miracle's comp is at clearing this camp. Controlling the camp, the capture zone of the bird camp, that's what they're good at. With all the CC they have and the super tankiness that uh, Chen's going to provide. But clearing this is a nightmare. And it's just too risky even for Jaehyun to properly put down his silence, his lurking arm, or he'll get picked. He doesn't have that range to get in there. The best book they have is probably in tail from a Nubara. Yeah, I mean, Judy's throwing out <laughs> some shurikens, but look at, look at how this one camp just gets a fort. And they're just like, oh yeah, come at me. Oh, you have no poke, you have no wave clear. Fort's dead. So now 10's up for Ballistics right before the Immortal phase. Gonna win halftime, and it looks like they want to even fight for this camp. This is the first time Ballistics can realistically do so, because they do have Sank. Only pre-10 could Miracle really bully them. Yep, they're 10. There's nothing else. And holding onto that Divine Storm possibly, because Genji will be diving in most likely. You don't even need that. If you drop the Sanctification along with the Mastery, you don't even need that Divine Shield on ETC. And after watching this, seems like Hanzo will be... Ah, Divine Storm locked in. All right. So good against this comp. You can interrupt Chen's ability to drink Brew. He doesn't have his uh, Storm Earth and Fire yet. It's going to be up in just a second. If he, t if he goes for Keg, I don't even know what to believe anymore about the world. Um... It was it was Storm Earth and Fire yesterday, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, just making sure. Uh, <laughs> he's holding it, but uh, okay, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he keg. Um, uh, keg has been used last time for ballistics too, because the other side, either other side was uh, pretty divey, so it yeah. was to counter the dive coming yeah, in. Yeah, same as the way Divine Storms being used here, mm -hmm. essentially. Shuriken Mastery is complete. That's some extra damage. That's going to be helpful, actually, in terms of the next race, if Miracle survives long enough to see it. Well, let's see this full sh shielded. Well, not anymore full, but still. We'll go reach into the wall. Go to the key directly. Abathur has been pushing a little bit, but still needs a lot of time to yeah. soak in that extra bit of EXP. It's not a, you know, it's not a Locust build, so... All right, Gunza, here comes Judy. Flight. He's on SDE. He's got that Shuriken Mastery damage, but look, the Sank comes down. SDE is lighting them up. He is very low, though, and did not get the takedown required to get his dominance reset. Flailing arm here to help the retreat. SDE again targeted, but the shield's coming out from Tyrael too much. Judy flailing, but to no avail as all these shields are up. As he's barely going to be taken out. It's actually Abathur who gets the kill there with the uh, extra Impale damage coming out. But this is going to be a keep. And potentially game. Jayhun's caught here now. There's the solo mosh. Jayhun's gonna dance till he dies. Just like uh, the true Cinderella story if you actually read the Grimm's version, not the Disney version. And this is not the Disney version of HGC as Ballistics is not gonna give them a second, not a chance to come back. 
Odomoto goes down. They have some TC, but there's more than enough damage to bring this core down. 25% left. Still, the Tyrio is giving so much shield to everyone. That's going to provide. There's that last arrow for it to secure the game. That's game three and the end of the series. Ballistics Six. takes their easiest win of the three here on Battlefield of Eternity. The draft, maybe it was planned from the beginning, but I think it was ill-fated. Running a draft like this is just asking for trouble. Picking a Genji into the Uther gives Hanzo Hanzo's best map, arguably. And I think Genji's win rate against Uther now drops to 1 and 13 in Korea. It's a uh, spoiler alert, not a very high win rate. Yep. And it's right. for good reasons. It's not like we just cherry picked which teams were playing which hero. Uther shuts down Genji really hard. Genji needs Uther to be very viable in Korea. That's how he's played. When you take the first pick, Genji, you're just hoping they're not going to make the easy choice to take Uther. Oh, they made that choice of taking Genji and giving up Hanzo Uther. I don't know. Well, Sniper did play Hanzo twice in, in this uh, phase number one, part number one, but did not really win any. Uh, he actually won twice, but against... Against Ballistic, I think they had a different idea. I don't think they were planning on picking up uh, Anubarak's to cover Avatar Chen. Maybe it was planned on something else. I Your idea was right. They were trying to fix what they had. <laughs> I know you're upset. <laughs> Put that aside. Ready for the next game already? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, if you wanted to have... If you wanted to have, like, no disaster after... What was it? They banned the uh, Grey Mane. You banned a Tracer, and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm worried about this. I'm concerned about this, I guess. Or maybe they're trying to do something tricky. When the Grey get ban comes down, the only way you walk away happy is if you ban Uth or take Uther first pick, which is like kind of a weak first pick, but at least you've taken that tool away from the Grey You still give Hanzo, so it's like, oh, that's kind of bad. But if you take Hanzo, you give him Grey Man Uther, so it's like, oh, that's even worse. So uh, you, that's why the Shimada Brothers are bad in every game. You just can't let this happen. They'll let it happen. I don't know what their plan was. We'll never know. I might go ask them. After the after the match and the break, but I don't understand what happened. We might get to find some insights in the interview, but it's going to be from the ballistic side. Maybe they're going to also like uh, maybe if they interview SC or Hooligan, who I think should be the MVP, maybe he's just going to open his mouth and giant question marks and come out. I don't know, but I was a little bit appalled by that draft. Yep. Clef. That Miracle. was uh, it was not going to work. Yeah, Miracle today how they drafted with their new roles. I think they're trying to make it work, but it's going to take a longer time. Well, the one before with Gun Gunza in it, I think it was working at least. But this one, uh, I think it will take at least a few weeks or maybe months to make this work because they're having a lot more issues. Judy's on to a different role. It seems like he's not as aggressive as a DPS where the others are super aggressive. They actually look for that angle to go for that kill. And when he's playing Tracer, Grey Mane, he was just along with the teammate going, making good, those safe entrants. Make sure he exits. But when you are going for the kill, you're not really looking. Of course, it's better to exit alive. But still, you need to at least trade yourself to do the maximum amount of damage. But he was being not as aggressive. Maybe he'll change his play style. It's going to take a while. Yeah. You know, it's position swap.